there friends, Nibs again. Out here at the range doing a little bit of shooting today. And I wanted to get out and shoot my two new powder burners that I just brought home. <clears throat> this one uh, is pretty cool. This one is a number four Lee Enfield 303 British rifle. And it's pretty cool. The thing I like about it the most, I think, that's the most interesting about it is the way that it's so crudely uh, machined because it was like a last stitch. Uh, hurry up and get them out the door at the end of World War II. This one was made in 1943. Um, there's really not much as far as markings go on this thing. Uh, most of them have a lot of like British proof marks and all sorts of stuff like that on it. This one has, has none of that. Uh, it just has number four mark one right here, 1943 right here, and uh, a very light serial number right there. Other than that, I cannot find, well, actually there, there is, it says England right there. But most of them have like proof marks all over them and, you know, where they were made and all sorts of stuff on the wrist and stuff like that. But this one, again, is one of those... Uh, get it out the door quick. I did shoot a couple of shots with it before I started up. <clears throat> just want, we've got a gong here at 100 yards. I wanted to see if I could hit it. Mostly just wanted to see if the thing wasn't going to blow up in my face before I started the video up. I guess that would make for good video, right? <laughs> Jeez. But uh, I've got a, uh, it's not a splatter burst. It's one of the, uh, the big uh, Birchwood Casey, I think it is. Uh, Sight in champion, okay, champion. Sight in, uh, so we got a little bit better chance of hitting the target. Um, I wasn't hitting the gong at 100 yards, so I'm not sure exactly where it's hitting, but we're gonna go ahead and try it and see where it ends up. Uh, that's at 50 yards, that, that sight in target that I have there. So I have, uh, bag full of my reloads. I do have some commercial, well, I say commercial, I think it's actually Milserp uh, ammo. These will hold up to 10 rounds, but I'm just gonna put five in at a time. We'll shoot a five round group and see where we go from there, if we wanna keep going or not. Go ahead and see if we can hit the target. <laughs> like I said, the uh, the factory loaded ammo that I have uh, for 303 British, I believe, is Milserp. So I'm not sure if that is or isn't uh, corrosive. So I like to shoot my own hand loads. I know they're not corrosive, <laughs> but. Uh, I know they're uh, all loaded with precisely the right amount of powder and all that stuff. Uh, if you, after watching Scott uh, from uh, Kentucky Ballistics video blowing up his 50 BMG, uh, I don't trust anybody else's hand loads and I'm very skeptical about uh, commercial loads, especially out of bigger guns like this. But uh, let's go ahead and see if we can hit something. This. Uh, this aperture in the back here is about a quarter inch in diameter, so it's about as loose as they get. All right, yeah, I'm about uh, two inches high and an inch and a half to the left. But uh, that is definitely a minute of, minute of bad guy. Come on, why is this magazine not feeding? <laughs> All right, yeah. Not the best group in the world, but I'm 
hitting there. <laughs> Uh, keep bumping that. It's not terrible. We might do another one. Definitely liking, it's liking firing my uh, reloads, and that's good. I'll take those cases home and stick a new bullet in them and try them again. Gonna have a bruise on my shoulder, I think. Starting to come together. Let's go ahead and uh, stick another handful of rounds in here and we'll uh, see if we can hit something. So, this is the uh, 303 British, very much like the American uh, 30 odd six, except for it has a, a rimmed base. So, I guess it's actually probably closer akin to. Uh, the Russian 762 54R. Uh, they both, those both use the same size bullet, just a tiny bit bigger than the American uh, 30 odd six 308 bullet. These uh, tend to run about 311 or 312, 0 0.311 or 0.312. And so uh, let's see, I was hitting a little high, but pretty centered. I'm going to shoot at the Target on the lower, lower left. See if we can dial this in a little bit better. Still hitting high. Really no, uh, really no adjustment here, except for uh, Kentucky windage. So, how many times can I use Kentucky in one video, right? <laughs> Which is high, doing all right. We got some recoil going on with this bad boy. <laughs> Not as bad as my jungle carbine, though. After a shooting session with the jungle carbine, I was ready to go home and take a nap. <laughs> oh, that one. That one almost got away from me. I hit right on the corner of the paper there. All right, oh, we got a, we got another downpour happening here. So, but we'll keep going. That one almost hit the bullseye I was aiming at. All right, so I think I loaded six up this time. <laughs> sized group out there is strictly my eyes and not really the gun's fault. 50 yards with open sights for me is a, a pretty good stretch. All right, well, four of them were a pretty decent looking group. We'll throw out those other two and <laughs> only look at those, those four, but that's a cool old gun. Really, uh, Really a pleasure to shoot these old timers like this. Uh, really love these mill serps. I actually kind of started out my gun collecting days collecting mill serps, and then I kind of went into 22s, and then I started collecting military trainer 22s. And most recently, obviously, you guys know I've kind of went off the deep end with air guns, which I really love. But uh, I still, I still love these. Uh, 
this is this is where I started out. This is the the bread and butter what I really started out my collection with, and I've got quite a few still. Um, I haven't gotten rid of too many of those. Uh, I like like my Mausers. Got a 1903 Springfield uh, SKS. So I uh, a Carcano. I really need to get that Carcano out. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I did have a 6.5 Carcano, but I sold that one. Uh, but I have the seven. 7, is it 7.5 millimeter or 7 millimeter? I don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but the, the weird the weird Carcano, I think it's 7 millimeter. Uh, 7.35, 7.35 Carcano, that's what it is. Um, and uh, I actually found somebody who had virgin brass. I bought 200 pieces of virgin brass and I bought 400 projectiles, so as little as I shoot that gun, that ought to last me quite a while. But uh, I take I take my time with the brass when I'm reloading it, and, and don't overwork it, and uh, so it'll last a long time. But anyway, there you go. There is my new bring home uh, 303 British Lee Enfield number four Mark One. My other one's a number four Mark One slash three which was a Mark I that was re, it was, and that was an earlier Mark I, but it had been re, refurbished in like 1947. Uh, that's where it got the slash three. And, uh, but that one's sporterized. I really love to find some, some old furniture for it to put on there. And they're not giving that stuff away anymore. So I was really happy to find this one all in original, original condition. And uh, it's pretty cool, so. Anyway, hope you guys liked the video. Till next time, have a great day.